Welcome back to Stormworks Basics Tutorial. This is the Module Engine Tutorial Part 3. So in the first episode, went ahead and built this Module Engine. The second episode was the Transmission Tutorial. So the first episode was based on making this engine for a car. And so in Episode 3, what we're going to do here is we're going to convert this engine over to a boat. Right, so this is the build from the first episode. You can go ahead and uh, download this off the workshop if you'd like to follow along. So what we're going to do here is this is set up for a car, so pretty simple. So what we're going to do is we're going to convert this over and we're going to turn this into a boat. So first thing we'll do is we'll get rid of the wheel. I'm also going to get rid of the seat here. And we're going to control this with a helm just so that we know this is for a boat. And so we'll go ahead and we'll grab a helm and we'll stick it on here. So this is how we're going to be controlling it now. So first thing we'll do is we'll configure the helm. So what we're going to do here is we're going to use WS. Now generally the way that many boats operate, not all of them, but many boats operate uh, this way. What you'll do is you'll push your throttle of your boat forward and you'll go forward. When you bring the throttle to the middle position that will be neutral, it will disengage the engine from the propeller. The propeller will stop, therefore you will stop. If you bring the throttle backwards, it's going to change the gearing so that the propeller will turn the opposite direction. It will rev up the engine and you'll go backwards. So this is how I like to build my boats. And so what we're going to do here is for WS, this is going to be throttle and it'll be reset 100%. And I'll go ahead and show you what this does. So if you make it reset 100%, let's go ahead and grab a dial. Dial is a good way to uh, demonstrate this. So we'll put a dial right here on top where we can see it. And I'll go ahead and I will plug in the WS uh, output here. So here's WS. We're going to go ahead and plug that right into the dial. All right, we'll spawn that. I'm just going to turn on infinite electricity so I don't have to uh, plug that dial in. And we'll go ahead and we'll jump on the helm. So when we do the reset 100%, what this means, when I press W, it's going to go to 1 instantly. When I let go of W, it's going to go to 0 and stay at 0. When I press S, it's going to go to negative 1. And this is essentially turning the W into a press button and the S into its own press button. So what we'll do here is we'll press W. As you can see, it goes to 1. When I press uh, let go of W, you see it goes back to 0. And when I press S, it goes down to negative 1. So this is how you can convert these into essentially two press buttons. That's how we're going to start with this. So I'm going to add a gearbox facing the engine and a small propeller. So let's go ahead and start connecting this. So we'll go back here. Next thing we want to do here is we're going to go to the trigger. This is going to be stop. All right, so this is going to stop our boat. When we press this, what it's going to be like is in real life, like I said, the middle position of the throttle is you trying to stop the boat. It's going to neutralize the boat. It's going to put you in neutral. It's going to stop the thrust. It's going to disconnect the uh, the propeller from the engine, and you'll come to a stop. So we want the stop, but we want it to be push. Next thing we do is go down to six here. This is going to be engine, start, slash, stop. All right, so... You can do this a couple ways. One, you can do a push starter. The reason I like having a start stop, this is going to be a toggle. And the reason I do this is this will have an auto restart function. And so if we stall our boat, it's going to automatically restart our engine so that if we go in reverse, that's generally when you'll stall your boat, it will automatically restart. So we don't have to worry about it. Okay. And so the reason for this is pretty simple. The propeller will turn to the right when we're going forward. If we take our throttle and we go forward and then we drag it all the way to the back and we want to go in reverse, the propeller weighs something. It has momentum, right? Force is mass times acceleration. So it has a current rate of speed and it has a certain mass. It has a force going right. When we put it in reverse, we're now asking that propeller to go left. And so that acts like a brake on the engine. And that will slow the engine down. Once the engine gets below 2 RPS, it will stall and die. And so by doing this system, it will automatically restart our engine if our engine stalls and dies. All right, so that's good to have. All right, so what we'll do here is we'll go ahead and we'll grab the composite. And we'll plug that into where seat was. All right, so that will be our helm. Next thing we want to do here is we're going to go into the microcontroller. Same microcontroller we had for the car. And so we'll go ahead in here, and we need to change some things up. So remember, a car, you press W to go forward, you press S to brake, right? You would shift it into reverse, and then you'd press W again to go in reverse, kind of like you would in a real car. We're going to change a lot of this up. So what I'm going to do here is we're going to keep this uh, composite read number two. That's our WS. We're still going to control this with WS. And this was our, uh, our formula here for running the car. All right, so we're just going to go ahead, and we're going to delete that, and we're going to rebuild it. So what we're going to use is an up-down counter here. All right, so the up-down counter is going to act like our throttle. So we turned our WS into two buttons. W is one button, S is another button. And then we're going to use our up-down counter as our throttle. 
So we're going to go ahead here. Our increment's going to be 0.1. Now, this could be as slow or as fast as you want. If the throttle is coming in too fast, you would make this number smaller. If this is going too slow, you'd make the number bigger. So we're going to go 0.1. This is a number I've tested. This works pretty well. For example, if I'm using a door, I'll often do 0.001, very slow. But an application like this, 0.1 should be good. And we can tune this if it's either too slow or too fast for us. Reset value is going to be 0. That's going to be idle. We're going to enable the clamp. All right. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to set our maximum speed on our engine in both reverse and in forward. So our negative number is going to be our reverse speed. All right, so we're going to set a reverse speed of 15 RPS. Forward is going to be positive 15 RPS. So negative 15, positive 15. Reset value of zero. This zero, we're going to connect to that space bar. That's going to be our stop button, OK? So the next thing we want to do is we've turned WS into buttons. Now we need to actually get those buttons to work. So the first thing we do is grab a threshold gate. This threshold gate is going to be 1-1. One, one. So again, when we press the W key, as I showed you on the dial, it will read a 1. All right, we'll copy that, and we'll paste a Control-C, Control-V, and we'll make this a negative 1, negative 1. So remember when we did the S key, it shows us a negative 1. So when I press the W key, it will read the 1, and then it will increase the throttle. When I press the S key, it will give me a negative 1, and it will decrease the throttle so that we can slow down and or go in reverse. We're going to grab a composite read on off, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to plug that back into our seat, in this case a helm. And we're going to go to channel 31. 31 is our trigger, our space bar. We'll go ahead and we'll update this, and I'll show you how we figure that out. So if we go to composite and we hover over there, you notice that it says on off 31 trigger. So channel 31 is an on off signal. It's the trigger. That's our space bar is what it's defaultly connected to. So that's channel 31. So if you didn't know how to get that channel, that's where you find it. All right, so let's go ahead and back in there. So 31 is going to be our zero. So that's going to go right there. So when we press our space bar, we're going to ask the engine to stop us. All right, that's going to put the throttle in zero. So let's say we're coming up to an island. Oh, my God, we're going to hit the island. We quickly just press the space bar. It will tell our throttle to go to zero, and we will go ahead and we'll slow down and stop. All right, so let's move that over like that. This is all connected, all right? You can move these around if you need to see the tails. I'm kind of... Don't have a ton of space here, so we're just kind of uh, putting them uh, pretty tight here. All right, so the next thing we want to do here is if we fed this directly into the PID, we'd have problems. And the reason is, remember, our engine needs to always be positive, right? We need to, we're need we telling our engine what RPS we want. We're saying, hey, I want 15 RPS. It's comparing it to our current RPS, and it is either going up or down in order to give us that RPS that we desire. Now, we can't feed it a negative number. As soon as it goes below... Uh, 2 RPS, it's going to stall our engine and die. So we definitely can't feed it this negative number. So we don't want to connect this directly in. There's still more we have to do. So what I like to do here is I grab one of these three functions. So as you see, it's X, Y, Z. If we go ahead and search function, you'll see we have a bunch here. We have this one X, Y, Z. We have this one with a lot, and we have one that has one. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to do the one with three. All right. So we'll look at another block here. We can with these function blocks, we can do a bunch of these base blocks. So, for example, we have an ABS block. Let's go ahead and look at that. Now, if we read it, it says, outputs the absolute value of the input value. Negative numbers become positive. Okay, so what ABS is, is the absolute value always gives us a positive. Now, if we plug this in here, even when this is reading that negative 15, it would give us a positive 15. So what this does is all numbers coming out of here and going into the ABS block will come out of this side as a positive number. And that's what we want. But we're not going to use the ABS block. What we're going to do is click on this function. And if we go down to add-on, you'll see right here, it has ABS X, absolute value of X. So this is the same as using that absolute value block, right? So we'll go ahead and we'll click on this and we'll put a... ABS, ABS, parentheses, X, parentheses. Now, if we look here, back it out on, that's what it has to look like. When you put ABS in, it will turn pink, and then you'll have your X there. If you forget a parentheses, as you see, it says it's missing a parentheses. So what this is going to do is this is going to give us the absolute value of X. A negative 15, we want to go in reverse. It will give us a positive 15. We always want that engine positive, all right? Next thing we'll do here is if we go down here in the add-ons again, we look, there's clamp, right? Clamp is another block we could use. So we could use multiple blocks, or we could make one formula in one block that will do this to save us some space. So that's what we're going to do. So what we want to do, if we look at clamp, it says clamp, 
clamps X within YZ. So for example, let's say that we're feeding this X uh, what we want our engine to go. We want our engine to idle at 3.5 RPS. So that would be Y of 3.5. We want a maximum RPS of 15. That means that our Z value would be 15. So it would clamp that X value between Y and Z. So what we can do here is we can go up in our formula and we'll type in clamp. All right. Then what we'll do is we'll put a parenthesis. And then what we'll do is this is going to be our X component. So ABS X is going to take care of this blue X right there. All right. Then we'll put a comma. Then we want to figure out why. Now, there's two things we could do. One, we could type in the number, 3.5 RPS. Okay. So we can make it look like 3.5 RPS. We could also put in the 15, which is our max. And we could close that parenthesis and we're all done. But I want to make this a little bit easier so that we can easily change it. Let's say 3.5 is too low. We could easily raise that. If 3.5 was too high, we could lower it. And we're going to do this with a property number. So instead of doing it like this, what we're going to do is we're going to put Y, comma, Z. All right. And if you're confused about that, look at the bottom here, X, Y, Z. And if we look at our function block here, we have X, Y, and Z. So whatever the X is, that's going to be our up-down counter, is going to give us the absolute value of X. All right, now Y and Z, what we're going to do is we're going to take this property number here. And what this allows us to do is we can type in here, this is going to be idle. This is going to be what RPS the engine idles at. When we're just sitting still, the engine needs to keep running. It's going to idle at 3.5 RPS, okay? That's going to go into our Y value. Our Y value here is our lowest desired RPS, all right? And we'll go ahead and just move this up a little bit. And we'll grab the property number and we'll copy it, Control C and V. And we'll go ahead and we'll do this max RPS. And you want to make this, you want to call this something that you recognize because I'll show you why in a second, why I like these property numbers. All right, so let's go ahead and we'll connect this up to the PID like so, and we'll update it. All right, now when I click on this microcontroller, if you look down here, we just typed in idle and max RPS. So I can test this, and instead of having to go back into the microcontroller and find where I have this, what I can do is right from here, I can edit any of these numbers. So I could go in there and I could make that a 3.0 if I wanted it uh, lower. I could make it a, a 3.8 if I wanted it higher. You can change it here right on the fly. All right, so let's go ahead and back in that microcontroller. All right, so what's going to happen here again is we're going to press the WS key. If we press W, we want our throttle to go up. It's going to count up. Again, if we look here, it goes to up. It's going to increase this number at a rate of 0.1. It's going to then come up here, and it's going to give us the absolute value, always a positive number, and it's always going to keep it between 3.5 and 15. When this here is 0, it's still going to give us a 3.5 idle. Negative 15, it's going to give us a positive 15. And because this is the same 15, it's never going to go over. Even if we made this 20, because this is limited at 15, it will only go to um, 15. All right, so we'll put that in there. That is now plugged in there. All right, so why even go through this step? Why even do this? Well, this is how we're going to uh, dictate when we want to go in reverse. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to set this up here so this puts us in reverse. So we'll go ahead to design logic and we'll add a node. This is going to be reverse. So on off, output reverse. So if we come back up here, we have our reverse. So we need to tell this when we want to go in reverse. Well, what we want to do is whenever this number is negative, we want it to click us into reverse. So what we'll do here is we'll go ahead and go on logic gates. We'll do less for less than. As you can see, that pops up. We'll go ahead and we'll plug the up down counter into the top node like so. And if you ever leave one of these blank like this, it will be zero. So if this is if this number here is less than zero, it will click us into reverse. So this is going to be our shifter for reverse. So pretty simple there. That's how this is going to shift us forward and back. All right, so let's go ahead and we'll test it out and see how it runs. So let's update it. So right here, we have to connect our gearbox. Now, the only time you have to connect gearbox to electricity is if you desire to shift them, which we are. So we'll start here with a one-to-one. -one, and this one will be one negative one. So this will be forward, and this one will be reversed. And so the next thing we want to do here is we want to take the reverse node, and we want to make sure we connect that up to the gearbox. All right, so the next thing we need to do is we need to change our clutch a little so that it also works in reverse. So if we look down here, we have two things going on here to, for our auto clutch. This is the auto clutch I worked in, uh, on in the first tutorial. As you see here, if WS is greater than zero, and the RPS 
is greater than 3.5, it is going to increase the clutch and start to clutch in. Now, this isn't going to work because we're no longer running WS greater than. All right. So what we want to do here is we want to go from uh, if this throttle is greater than 3.5 here. All right. So what we're going to do there is we need to change this up. So what we're going to do here is we need to take this ABS block. We want the absolute value. And we're going to go from this throttle, we're going to go into the absolute value block, and we're going to plumb that in. So if the absolute value is greater than zero, we want to go uh, forward here. All right. So we need to do that in order to make a reverse work. So let's go ahead and update that, and we'll go test it out. All right. So we'll jump on. We'll start it up. All right. We're running. So let's take a look, make sure we're running. As you can see, the crankshaft is around 3 RPS, where we have it set. All right. We're going to go ahead and we'll press the and hold the W key, and we'll throttle up. All right, so start new clutch in the engine. You see it was hesitating a little bit. That means the clutch is coming in too fast, so we should probably slow that down. All right, and as you can see, the propeller's turning to the right. If I press the space bar, it's going to tell our throttle we want zero throttle. We want to be stopped, and it's automatically going to slow the... Uh, it's going to decrease the clutch. As you can see, the clutch is at zero, and it's going to separate the propeller from the engine so we can stop. Next thing we'll do is we'll press the S key, and we'll go backwards. And so you hear that little starter there? Again, that's because the propeller has momentum. It's turning to the right, and then what we're doing is we are now have the propeller going right, and the engine is trying to go the opposite direction, and so it is slowing the engine down, stalling us. With the auto restart, it will automatically restart us. All right, we'll go ahead and we'll press the space bar. And that will um, zero us out. If we look again, the clutch is going to be zeroed. And that's going to stop us. Now we want to go forward. We might stall a little here because we're, the propeller is still moving. Yep. As you can see, it, auto, uh, it did the auto stop there. All right, good. So we need to tune some things here. So let's go full throttle. So most of this left is tuning. So this is going ahead here at a one-to-one. -one. All right. As you can see, we have a nice steady uh, 12.89. All right, and so let's go tune a couple things. So one thing, you, you heard the clutch. Uh, it was going in and out. Uh, it was starting to stall a little bit. So how do you configure a clutch? What you want to do here is you want to work on the rate. So if you notice, we're going 0 0.005. That seemed like it was too fast. What's happening is the the propeller is starting to slow the engine down, and when the engine slows down too much, right, as you can see, we release some of that clutch. So this is a little bit too fast, so let's half it. So let's do 0 0.0025. So if you're having that problem where it's stalling when it's trying to go forward, or it's, it's not stalling, but what it's doing is feathering the clutch. It's naturally designed the system to feather the clutch. That's how you would do it IRL. Um, what you can do is change how slowly or quickly the clutch goes in. It's called dumping your clutch IRL. If you just let go of your clutch, the car will lurch forward, but it will stall. If you gently let your clutch out at a certain rate, it will gently let the car go forward. If you start to uh, stall the car because you're letting the clutch out too fast, you can gently push it in again, and so it goes in, out, in, out, in, out, in, out, 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 out. And that's how you feather the clutch. That's what it's called. That's how you do it IRL. All right, so engine's on. Let's go ahead and go forward now, and let's listen to the clutch, or watch the clutch. All right, notice there was no hesitation. Last time it was going, uh, right, because it's going in and out on the clutch. So by slowing the clutch down now, we slowed the rate of clutch application, and this allowed it so that the engine doesn't stall. So you do need to tune these things in. This is part of understanding how these systems work in real life to, to be able to tune them. If you have a more powerful engine, you're going to be able to put your uh, clutch down faster because the load is lower uh, in regards to the strength of your engine. If you have a weak engine, you need to really feather that clutch to get it in. All right, so there we are, and we're revved up. Let's go ahead and press space to stop. Now let's kick it right into reverse. You'll hear a stall. And there we go. So that clutch setting is much different. So you're going to have to tune these systems. And that's part of understanding the mechanics of how this works. And you'll get better at it by being able to tune it. All right. And if we look here, we have our clutch engagement speed. We have our clutch zero. 
Uh, you can tune those. I go over that in the first video. And you can also change the uh, rate at which the clutch goes in. But pretty simple tutorial here. Um, if you want a tutorial on how to gear boats, uh, I will put in the description the Beginner Career Build Series episode where I talk about making the boat go faster how you actually determine the gearing. But this tutorial is a very simple one, just trying to go over how we can convert this engine tutorial into a boat. So hopefully you find, guys found that helpful. Went over a bunch of things here on how to turn the WS into buttons and then turn those into an internal throttle, how to get the absolute value of a number so that even though we are uh, putting in a negative number, it will still feed a positive to the engine that allows us to control our reverse and then hooking up all the systems. So hopefully you guys found that helpful and I'll see you in the next one.